<clears throat> Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. This is Deja with Twisted Sisters Mojo. Um, before I start today's video, I want to give a shout out and a thank you to all of our new subscribers. Every time I get notification that someone new is subscribed, I'm just thrilled. So thank y'all so much. And if you're new to our channel and you haven't subscribed yet, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button. We try to make sure that we respond to all comments and we really love interacting with y'all. So thank you once again. So with that being said, the topic of today's video is casting your circle and calling your quarters. Um, I would start off talking about smudging and smudging your space, but we've already gone over that in a previous video. So check that out. So let's begin. The first thing you're going to do is smudge your space. Very simple, very quick, however you want to do it. So you've got your space all smudged and you're ready to start your ritual and you want to go ahead and cast your circle. There's a lot of different ways to cast your circle. It's going to depend on what specific path you follow, what specific um, traditions they have within that. Um, for the purpose of this video, we're going to keep it a very eclectic so that you, the new subscriber or the new practitioner, can do it on your own and you're not being bound to one specific tradition. So the first thing you want to think about is how do I want to cast my circle? Do I want to use a wand? Do I want to use a staff? Do I want to use incense or resin to mark out the boundary of my circle? For myself, what I usually do is I will get myself my handy dandy little shell filled with salt or sand and get myself a charcoal block. Now these are not your charcoal briquettes that you get at Walmart or Home Depot. These you can find at metaphysical and occult shops. You can buy these online. They usually run about four dollars for a pack of like 10 or 12 and what you're going to do is you're going to light the edges of your charcoal block and it's going to start to sputter it's going to start to turn red once it starts to sputter and turn red that's when you know that you can drop your incense or your resin or your herbs or whatever it may be onto it and it's going to start to smoke and smolder and create this very lovely aroma depending on what you're burning. Then you're going to take your burning charcoal and you're going to walk around the perimeter of the circle in whatever size it may be. Now you don't have to do it this way. Again, you can use a wand or you can use uh, a staff or a sword or even your finger if you don't have any of those other things. Because what you ultimately want to do is you want to draw out a boundary that is going to protect yourself between the outside world and your ritual space. So let's say you don't have very many magical tools and you're wanting to do a quick ritual and you're in a very small confined space. Doesn't matter. Casting a circle is the same is the same for a teeny tiny space or a huge, huge space. You are just physically going to mark it out and say something to the effect of, by my power, by the power of the God, by the power of the goddess, I do hereby create a boundary of protection, of positive energy, or whatever it may be. And you're going to walk that once, twice, and three times. For myself, when I'm casting a formal circle, I always start in the east. That's the way I was taught. That's something that I've continued to do. Now, some traditions will say start in the north and work it that way. But for me, I always start in the east. Um, let's say you are really attuned to the element of fire and you want to start in the south. 
that's okay. Ultimately, it doesn't matter where you start as long as it connects and you can actually feel that boundary of protection surrounding you because that's all that casting a circle is. It's just physically creating that boundary between yourself and the outside world, a shield, if you will. Nothing negative can come in. Positive energy goes up. Simple as that. That's all casting a circle is. Simple enough. Now, you've got your circle cast, you're in ritual headspace. A lot of times you'll hear people talk about calling the quarters or calling the watchtowers, um, especially if they're Wiccan. Um, for me, again, I always start in the east. So you're going to look at the four elements that you're dealing with. East is air. East is yellow or white. Um, things that represent East are like feathers or smoke or things that are very airy and light in nature. You're going to have those things in the direction that faces East. So at that point, you're going to go to your Eastern quarter. You're going to light your incense. You're going to light your yellow candle, whatever it may be, and say something to the effect of powers of the East, element of air, I hereby ask for you to join me, however it may be. It can be a very simple invocation or it can be a very long, elaborate to-do. That depends on you and what is feeling. My rule of thumb is when you're doing an invocation or you're calling upon a quarter or you're calling upon the God or you're calling, calling upon the Goddess, let it come from the heart. Let it flow. Don't feel forced to do it a specific way you know it's all about what is coming from you and the energy that you're directing all right so you've you've talked to the quarter of the east you've invoked it you've asked for its presence then what you would do is you're going to move to the south you're going to face the, the southern quarter and you're going to do the same thing but with the element of fire so you would have like a red candle in that direction or an orange candle in that direction. Um, something that represents fire, like, like a wand or whatever it may be. And again, you're going to go through the same process as you did in the east, but you're going to change it to the element of fire and the direction of the south. Once that's done, you move to the west. Now in the west, you're looking at blues teals, um, bowls of water, chalices, things of that nature that represent water. And you would go through the same thing. Powers of the West, element of water. I ask for your blessings on my circle. I ask that you join me. Whatever it may be. Once that's done, then you're going to move right on to the element of North. And in the North, you have your greens and your blues. I'm sorry, your greens and your browns. You have things like dishes of earth, you have crystals, you have money, things that represent earthly elements. Same thing. Powers of the north, watchtowers of the north, um, element of earth. We ask for your structure, your stability, please join us. Whatever words, again, whatever words come to you. And there you've done it. You have invoked or called upon the four quarters. And then you can go and, you know, do your God invocation or your goddess invocation or go straight to your magical work or into your meditation or whatever you have decided to do for that particular ritual. So you've gone through your stuff, you've done your ritual, you've grounded yourself out, and you're ready to open up the space again. You do it in the exact opposite of what you started. So you would start in the north, powers of the north, element of earth, I thank you for your presence, I thank you for your gifts of stability and prosperity, um, I release you now, whatever it may be. Then you snuff out your north candle move on to the west. Do the th same thing. Element of water, I thank you, blah, 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 blah. Move to the south, 
elements of fire. I thank you, blah, 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 blah. Then you're back in the east again. Thank the quarters of the watchtowers of the east. Let them drop. You've did, There you have effectively, after your ritual, thanked the elements, dismissed the elements, let them go. Now, uncasting your circle or dropping your circle. This is really dependent on you as a person. Um, for me, when I feel ritual is done, it's done. And I just quickly go, widow shins around the circle once, poop, circle's dropped. You may want to do it in the exact same steps that you did to cast your circle, but in the opposite direction. You know, I release this circle. Um, I, I release this sacred space. However words that you want to use to dismiss your circle, do it that way. So, that is how you quickly cast a circle and call the quarters. Um, as we go on, we're going to talk about ritual invocations, calling on the god, calling on the goddess. But for those starting out, I always recommend keep it simple, keep it quick, whatever feels most meaningful for you. And that has been our video for today. So I want to thank you guys for joining us. I hope that you will hit the thumbs up button or the subscribe button. And we will see you all in our next video.